Uh, we envision a world where African women researchers uh, shape the future of the continent through their voices and their ideas. You already seated in the four groups um, to engage with our topic tonight. The first group that we have is climate change, the environment and natural resources. Second group we have indigenous knowledge systems. The third group information and technology. Number four, gender, rights, and governance. And so today, we're through via our Moazo Ideas Night and through the theme of unveiling uh, the journey of African women in research, we have this gamified form of research where several actors, i.e. yourselves, who are within the academy and outside of it, come together to collectively think about um, tangible solutions uh, regarding our pressing development challenges. And so for this edition, we're going to go on a journey of finding the solutions uh, to the poor representation of African women in research and academia. So today we are asking the question, what innovative ideas and approaches are emerging from the sectors of climate change technology, indigenous knowledge, and gender to address challenges related to gender parity in the African research ecosystem. And just for, by the way, the audience member with the highest score will get a gift at the end, so, yeah? You have one minute. Any guesses? Walisha well, Ajaza, yeah. these are smart people. <laughs> Which famous African computer scientist was fired from Google headquarters in San Francisco for pointing out the inequalities built into AI? Sasa muli maliza muli kwa mnajaza nini? Guys, take your time. There's a reason why we give you time. Nabukiona to Papatia, one minute, thirty seconds. Think twice. <laughs> okay? Hey, good Fatima job, guys. Al-Fihri. Al we love it. So in each group, we have questions that are just meant to help you in your discussion, to come up with points and answers that you will be able to um, collate and present to us. So according to our group, we felt like we need to understand everyone's potential and respect their diversity. At this area, we are trying to empower women, and this is something that we really need to look up to. What policies can constitutions put in place to narrow the gender gap among researchers in the field? So we know that we have to be um, updated and we need to have understanding in whatever thing we are doing, especially when it comes to gender parity. So we need to be made aware of what is gender parity and what are some of the instances that we face when it comes to gender parity and how best we are going to address it. Um, how we can decolonize African research ecosystems. So for the first answer, we gave funding women in rural areas who want to pursue higher education and also women who want to research, like women who are done with their higher education and they want to continue doing research in, uh, uh, in uh, indigenous knowledge. There are women who have already broken the barrier so we can get these women to mentor the younger women or the other women who feel like they want a mentor, who feel like they want to be motivated and it will be good for the women who have made it to motivate the other women. I heard of, I've heard of indigenous, indigenous knowledge today, so it would have been good if I did hear of it when I was doing my course in history and archaeology. I would have liked to know how women in the past studied history in the, on their own. So I feel like when we started our discussion and what we came to realize is um, when you see the industry and the ecosystem of tech right now, as much as it is definitely the future that we're going forward into, we realize that still there's quite a large part of our nation that is still digitally dark. So I think when it comes to everything that we do in tech before we even get there, 
Our foundation is in education and awareness. So we have our chamas, we have our community centers, we have our community areas and marketplaces where these women congregate, even church. We need to educate them on the, what exactly this whole thing is we're discussing about tech. What does that mean for them? How can it even elevate them? And then moving on for the last one is what strategies can be used to narrow the gender digital divide in African research sector? And the biggest thing here is still education. We need to go to the communities, meet the women where they are, so they can understand this. A lot of big, the biggest thing is also economic fear. How are women making money from this? What is this tech thing? Because uh, at one point it has to impact you. What does it mean for you? Yes, you understand there are more funding um, uh, systems that are there, but most of them are in loan systems. So if we can have funding that can enable support women who are, might not uh, be able to handle loans, that can really help, and also uh, society in general. So if we can have more resources, uh, especially in the remote areas and rural areas that can enable uh, people to access them, then this can really help the society. We can advocate for increased visibility for the African women researchers. We currently have uh, policies, but the question is, are they being implemented? So it's very important to promote the gender equality and diversity in research and also the publication process. Vote which team had the best, most innovative and viable idea tonight. Yeah. Ten, nine, nine eight, nine, seven, six, five, four, three, two. In the generous knowledge, you will be more you. Kwa hivyo nitawa invite hapa juu kwenye stage. Come join us. I love it. It's giving vibes. Hey, uh, hey, like the winners you are. Hey. Hey. Hapana, hii kitu tulishafu. It's always nice to see when, when you host an event and then people come, when it's so cold, and when we are living in very uncertain times, no one wants to be outside at some certain hours, we don't take it for granted. So just to say thank you so much for coming, thank you so much for participating, and we hope when we host the next one, we'll also see you again. So everyone, uh, thank you so much. As you go home, be safe, and yeah, asante sana. <laughs>